it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are kind of recreating a look that I have seen done and sometimes when I see things I think can I do that myself and often the answer is yes, not always, but I'm going to show you one option today for a kind of watercolour blob-ish look but a little bit more centered around the stamp or the shape that you choose to use. So today I'm going to use this butterfly called Pretty Flutterby by the Woodwear Craft Collection. This, uh, these are gorgeous stamps, they stamp absolutely beautifully. They have a great price point and I think that they have some amazing designs, particularly their floral designs are gorgeous. So first of all, I am stamping straight onto my card base. I'm stamping with some Versafine Onyx Black Ink and I'm just giving it a second to transfer and I have a really nice transfer of my ink. I am going to heat set this with some clear embossing powder. Then whilst I have my stamp still out and everything is good to go, I'm going to stamp on a, not a scrap piece of paper, but I'm going to stamp on a, another piece of paper. We are going to cut this one, but I want it to be relatively sturdy. So this is actually going to be the same uh, paper that I make my card bases out of and all my card fronts. I did just grab a card front from my card front piles, but um, you want to make sure that you are going to be able to kind of end up using it as a stencil. Now this is the great thing because you can do this with any stamp that you have. This could be a flower, it could be an animal, it could be a fairy, a pixie, a mushroom, I don't know, any shape that you have, any stamp. So I have them both heat set at the moment. Now we are going to take this one and I have my little cutter bee fine detail scissors. I want to cut just on the outside of the shape. Now I want to make sure there aren't kind of sharp corners. I am going to cut off the antennae, but once I go around the shape, I'm actually going to keep the outside of the shape. So that's what I'm focusing on at the moment. Um, I'm going to keep the inside because it's a gorgeous butterfly and I know I can use this for other things, but for this, we want this gorgeous outside that we've created. Now this looks nice, but it's a bit plain. If you want plain and kind of clean and simple, then this would be a good option. You could use this over top as a stencil and start stenciling color and things. It would be beautiful. It's kind of a mask. It masks all the outside, but I want to take it one step further and make it kind of a drippy, watercolory, blobby kind of butterfly. So it's a little bit hard to describe, but I'm going to take little chunks out all around the butterfly and do sort of like drips or extra little where the water has flowed or <laughs> I don't really know the right words to describe it but you'll kind of see as I go along. So a little pair of fine detailed scissors are perfect for this. I have these cutter bee ones. I have had these probably since I began crafting. I don't even know how many years that was. These are absolutely brilliant. In fact now I have two pairs because Usually I have little hands beside me that tend to want the same thing as me, so it's best to have a spear pair going around as well. But I'm just going around my butterfly shape. There is no rhyme or reason to what I'm kind of cutting out. Some of the shapes end up looking a little bit weird. We can fix that later on. But for now, I just kind of cut drippy little shapes all around the butterfly. Once I think I'm done, I'm going to close up where we cut into the butterfly just with a little bit of low tech tape. This stencil isn't really planning to last me forever. I definitely could use this again, but um, I guess this is just kind of for this project in particular. I am adding some removable adhesive and I'm going to stick this down on top of my butterfly. Now we can still line this up because most of the things line up nicely, except for where we have all those gorgeous drips and things. Now for this, I'm going to be using Simon Hurley's dye ink. I love his dye inks. They do blend together beautifully. They're almost kind of a um, transparent, translucent kind of ink. They layer up absolutely beautiful. For his inks, because I don't have the whole collection and it's, I just find it easiest, I do have a finger dauber that is named with each one of the inks. I can do this because I don't have a whole lot of them and <laughs> it is just nice and easy for me. Um, so. What I'm going to do is take, I kind of have six-ish colors here that are, I mean, sort of the rainbow, but you know, you can do whatever you wish. And I always have a scrap piece of paper beside me because I never know how A, juicy my ink pad is 
or B, how much ink was left on the finger dauber from last time I used it. Now because I'm going for kind of a nice blended look here as I go around my butterfly, I don't want to accidentally kind of put the finger dauber straight to the paper and find that actually my ink pad was far juicier than I thought or last time I used this I must have inked it up and then put it back in the stack or you know and then I get a really big blob of ink. So I always keep a scrap piece of paper beside me to test where I'm at with my ink and in particular because for nice light general ink blending I don't want the um, dauber to be absolutely saturated with ink. I want there to be less ink than more if that makes sense. <laughs> And I must admit, I've done a few projects with Simon Hurley's inks recently using these six and they seem to be going together beautifully. I think it's Later Gator, which is the green, the Shooting Star, which is the yellow. I love this new yellow. He bought it out not too long ago and I love it. Clear Skies is the blue, Crown Me is the purple, Guppy is the orange, Prom Queen is the pink. Um, yeah, love this little combo. Now when I take this off, you can see kind of all these little drips and things, and I love this. I want to add a little bit more, so I'm taking a scrap piece of paper and cutting out some individual kind of drips, uh, or water splotches, whatever you like to call them. I could have done more um, splotch shapes, I guess, rather than drips, but for whatever reason, at this time, I was thinking drips. Now you may well have a stencil already that has drips on it, it's obviously a common shape, but um, A, I didn't feel like looking through my stash, and B, I could create them pretty quickly uh, just from that little scrap piece of paper. I use again the mint tape to cover up the little bits where I've cut into the cardstock, and then we have our own stencil again. <laughs> and with this I'm just going to go around, I have kind of one smaller drip, one larger drip, and then one drip kind of curved off to the side a little bit. So that was the range that I went for. I'm going to go around and kind of follow the colours, so to speak, um, and add some little drips here, there, and everywhere. Now this to me is just a really gentle, easy card when I don't feel like I have to kind of pull everything up. I've got some inks, I had one stamp, and I'm really enjoying it. So this to me is kind of gentle crafting. <laughs> it means that I usually don't have an absolute tornado left on my desk once I'm done. And I really enjoy this sort of thing every now and then, especially at the moment, I'm still feeling under the weather. Uh, this is taking a little while for me to come right. So um, this kind of crafting is definitely where I'm at. What kind of crafting do you do when you are not feeling great, but you still want to craft? That's the thing, I still enjoy this. I still really love my card making. That's why I do this channel. I love sharing these ideas, some tips and things that I kind of get. I love sharing all of that. So what do you do when you kind of don't feel like it, but you do feel like it? Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Then I have this one here. This is an old butter goodie. This is word fragments. I have used this thoroughly. This one is a good investment. I am stamping this out and if you know me, I stamp them two times because if I just stamp one, I will likely ruin it. Um, I am getting better, I think, but it's just my kind of luck that if I stamp one, I'll smudge it or something and then I have to re-get up my ink pad and the stamp and then stamp again. So nowadays, I just stamp two. I'm going to heat emboss these the same. I want to keep all the looks the same uh, for the black, so I did heat emboss those with some clear embossing powder, the butterflies. So I want to do the same with the sentiments and that keeps everything flowing nicely, not introducing any new tones of black or colours, keeping them all the same. So then I just use my same little cutter bees. I cut this out with a tiny little white border around the outside. Keeping this really simple, the best wishes sentiment could be used for lots of different occasions, I think. Now this is where I kind of thought I was finished, but actually when I looked at this, I couldn't handle a couple of the drip shapes that I had created. A couple of them were just, I don't know, I think when I, um, by the time you kind of cut the shape into the cardstock, you lose a little bit on each side because obviously the finger dobbers, um, you know, how they, that's how they color on top of a thicker uh, material because the cardstock is probably a teensy bit thicker than some stencil material, probably not really, but you know, so you get that kind of funky shape. So I ended up changing it just a little bit, making a little bit wider, so that the actual shape that got stenciled into it was a little bit smoother and not quite so weird. These are the finer details, I just couldn't handle leaving it, and I figure I may as well show you that I go back and rethink these things 
all the time. In fact, often by the time my videos get onto YouTube, because obviously I film them a little bit earlier, then they have to go through an editing process, then the voiceover process, then upload them. There's a whole process before they get to YouTube, so it's often a couple of weeks. And by the time they get to YouTube, I think, oh, I wish I'd done that, but a little bit different. Or maybe on the next card, I'll do this. Um, so yeah, anyhow, I hope you have enjoyed this very simple card for today. Thank you so much for joining me. As usual, supplies are always listed down below. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.